All right. Our hobby depends on open source firmware and the contributions that people give to these projects on the day-to-day -to, -day to make our experience in the hobby as enjoyable as it is. And with the holiday season coming up, it is the season of giving. And the biggest way you can give for an open source project is giving your time and contribute to the project. You may think a financial contribution is appreciated and it definitely is for these projects, but a bigger contribution that you can make that is even more appreciated is your time and effort to help contribute and help push the goals of the project forward. And in this day and age, paired with things like GitHub Desktop and ChatGPT and other artificial intelligence can help you navigate through the open source code if you get stuck on something, it is easier than ever to jump in and get involved and shape these projects basically how you would like to see them go. So in today's video, we're going to go through a couple of things to show you how easy it is to get your feet wet. And hopefully it will inspire a couple of people to start to get involved with some of these great projects you see behind me. So there's really three things you need to get started with contributing to open source. The first here is a GitHub account on github.com. And it's easy, it's free to sign up. That is a repository where all the open source projects are stored. The next piece of software you're gonna need is Git Desktop. This program makes it so much easier, so much easier to navigate and work with GitHub right here. Uh, for cloning and, and working the files back and forth and getting it pushed up and all that kind of stuff. Uh, super easy, super simple. It's a free application. You can download it and get it installed. The final thing is you will need a program to actually edit the code, the files. And probably the best one for that is Visual Studio Code, which you can see over here. Again, that is just a text editing code software that will highlight stuff. It kind of understands code, so it makes it a little easier. You could technically make all the edits in a notepad file, but this surely makes it a lot easier to navigate. Now, the final thing that I really think is a game changer that is very recent within the last year or so are all these new AI engines that can be in the moment help for anything that you get stuck on. I think this is especially important for open source because you don't, you know, you don't need to know how to code. I mean, as long as you can kind of see patterns and, you know, yeah, you can kind of work through stuff and you can just ask ChatGPT, for example, of one of them, of what does this code mean? And it will explain it to you. So just like this, say I'm looking at this code block and I don't really understand what it's doing and how it's functioning. I can just copy it, go over to ChatGPT and say, can you explain this code to me? Hold down shift, hit enter twice, and then paste it down here to give it some, some breaks there and hit enter. And ChatGPT will break down the entire code block and explain it to you. And when you're doing this, don't be afraid to get iterative to it. If it, it gives you an explanation that you don't understand, just say, I still don't understand this part of the code. Can you explain this to me further? I've done it so many times on one piece of code text that it actually said to me, I don't think I'm explaining this clear enough. Let me explain this another way. I thought ChatGPT was actually getting a little snippy with me at the moment, but I was okay with it because that final explanation it gave me actually was the explanation I needed. And then I could take it further. You can also ask it to write code for you saying, okay, with that code block, what if I wanted to do this with it? How could you write that into the code? Same thing, you have to test it out. It may not work the first time, but you just tell ChatGPT, hey, that didn't work, I got this error. What else do you think it could be? You can have a conversation. It's like having a buddy right aside of you going through the code line by line, something that you may think you would annoy somebody online with. Well, ChatGPT, for example, doesn't get annoyed. Well, at least I don't think it gets annoyed. It might've got annoyed. That might be bad. Well, anyways, it's an amazing tool. Now with any of the open source projects, you may want to think about where do you wanna make contributions? Do you wanna work solely on the flight firmware performance? Or do you want to work with the user interface or the analytical part of it? There's really three different pieces to any of it that I see. One is the firmware itself that flies the quadcopters, whether it be Betaflight, iNav, RG Pilot, so on and so forth. The next is the configurators, the human interface piece of it. 
you know, how are people uh, experiencing that is the ease of use really comes from the configurator. And, and finally, there's kind of the meats and potatoes. If you're very analytical, there's always the black box explorers. Uh, RG Pilot has uh, the equivalent to that as well to make that user experience and that more user friendly, easier, a little bit better for analytics of what you can do with it, how it navigates with, uh, you know, just the simple things like people added over the last five years, the in Betaflight Black Box Explorer, when you click on a um, one of the legends, it highlights the trace line, you know, that that little stuff goes a long way. And it's not to say that you have to pigeonhole yourself into one of those things. The code bases are different for the different aspects of it. The configurator and the black box explorer, those are HTML and JavaScript, whereas the firmware is C. So it's just different code language. Again, if you don't have a deep experience with any of those, it kind of doesn't matter. And chat GPT is already there. And uh, the variables are changing how it does things are different, but it, it kind of all boils down to the same thing, just nuances between the different code languages. So once you start to learn one, you kind of can translate that to the other fairly easily. Now, once you've figured out which piece of it, and maybe you're going to, you know, contribute across multiple pieces, it's really which project should you contribute to. So talking about the Betaflight project, I would say over the last five to eight years, Betaflight project has really kind of grown up. Uh, I would say within the hobby, has its own website. There's lots of people contributing and developing to it. Some people are, are very good at what they do and it's pretty advanced, you know, cloud building and things of that nature that are built into the application. The user interface has been polished a lot more. The Black Box Explorer has been polished a lot more. That said, there's always room for, you know, room for contribution. It's a very scientific based uh, project. People are very science minded. So when you throw something up against the wall, you're going to have to say like, Hey, this is better, but you're gonna have to like show it, not just show some flights. Like you're going to need to log it and, and do some things like that. And it's going to get peer reviewed for code style. And it's the best way to be coded and so on and so forth. So it's good that it's grown up, but on the flip side of it, there is more review and interaction. And that level of scrutiny you might not experience as much on other open source projects that might be easier going with less contributors because, well, there's less people contributing. So they're, you know, the value of each computer reader is a little bit higher. Now, the other project I've been involved with most recently, just a little bit, is iNav. And iNav, there is a big focus on fixed wing on it, although it does do multi-copters as well. And obviously it's GPNS enabled. Betaflight, as you probably already know, is mostly focused on flight performance, although they are adding GPS functionality to it. So if you're interested in being on the ground floor of adding GPS functionality, uh, probably to the best level it can be with a lot of analytics and very science-based, you know, check out Betaflight. iNav, uh, it already has, you know, uh, it's kind of coming from the other way where the GPS uh, and self-navigation has kind of been at its core for a long time. They've been focusing on flight performance improvements over the last, I would say, four years, three, four years. Uh, that is pretty good now in iNav, honestly. It's not as good as Betaflight yet, but it's 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 pretty it's pretty comparable. And uh, and they're continuing to focus on navigation modes uh, and rewriting that a little bit uh, more. My sense is there's a little bit less contributors for the iNav project. So if you're looking to kind of, I don't know, have a a less crowded room that you're contributing to, iNav might be your best bet. For example, the configurator, the Black Box Explorer, both you know could use some uh, uh, contributions and more focus put on those. I made a similar call to order in regard to that for Betaflight years and years ago, and it kind of seemed to work because we more people got involved. And I'm not saying I'm the only person that it could have been coincidence, but maybe there's something similar here where some a video like this gets the word out and you know more people consider uh contributing to you know the iNav project and the Betaflight project of course as well and finally there's the Ardu pilot open source project yes it's open source so that is a if big quadcopters or if you're interested in boats or trucks iNav is kind of the jack of all trades kind of uh firmware uh can submarines you know and everything i have not contributed to Ardu pilot yet my Taste of Ardu Pilot is there's a lot of functionality. It's probably not the best I've used it. It's 
not probably not the best flight performance wise because it's kind of focused on these bigger crafts and making sure it can cover all these different types of crafts and for sure the usability is not great it's it's you gotta you know be on your a game for using rg pilot most of the stuff is at the command line uh it's not user friendly um to and it doesn't have a it's, it doesn't have a huge popularity and base in it so again, I don't have a feel for the sense of the atmosphere in the RG Pilot project, but I could see that if you really wanted to have an open canvas for trying to help with the usability of a project where RG Pilot probably could use the most amount of help because it just has a yeah, that big wide range of things that it can do really does make it quite a bit of probably quite a bit of a challenge for it to uh, to be easy to use for all these different platforms that it can support. So if you're interested in taking the next step, I'm going to drop a link down to a playlist I have where the first step is talking about GitHub, how to make your own GitHub account, how to download GitHub desktop, how to fork repos, how to then clone them to your PC and kind of gets you rolling in that. And of course, all these open source firmware projects have places where you can get in contact with other developers, coordinate, ask questions, things of that nature. And if you're thinking to yourself, Hey, I'd love to contribute. I just don't know what I could contribute. I don't know what I could offer to help with in these firmwares. Well, I can definitely help you with that. So I will drop a pinned comment down below of some things I see in the Betaflight and the iNav project that you could help contribute with on day one. Just a ver variety of ideas. You can also don't hesitate to drop a comment down below if none of those suit your fancy or it's pique your interest and I'm sure I could come up with some other things as well and you can also just go to the discords or the other source groups and say and ask the other devs what uh what do you work what, what do you think I can help with and uh, yeah in the beginning it might be slow rolling a little bit you know Rome wasn't built in a day but at least you're you know again again getting smarter every day and uh working towards helping and contributing it obviously it needs to be something that you want to do so what do you think is this something you may consider in the upcoming year or the holiday season, the seizing of giving back? Contributing to an open source project is definitely the biggest way that you can help move the ball forward. And as you probably already know, the open source firmware and projects and the contributions people are making are the lifeblood of this hobby. Uh, without them, there would be no FPV hobby. This is the firmware. It's there's no coincidence. We're even on open source ELRS now. Uh, so again, it is us. It's community. Be a part of that and also learn something new. Thanks, everybody. Leave comments down below on your thoughts. And I hope this helped.